everybody. Special welcome to uh, visitors, whom we have a, a couple here today from Yamingi, Myra. Welcome. And Neil, welcome. They know Jacob Favich. They thought that he was actually going to be here today. I think they're a bit let down when they saw me. <laughs> and understandably so. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, this morning's readings and service is um, based on um, readings from uh, a New Year's Day um, uh, service and also for this uh, for uh, the reading set for today as well. I'll be preaching based on uh, the epistle reading, the Romans reading, which you will we'll all be familiar with once it's read, and um, however interwoven... Um, the themes from the, the other readings in the psalm as well into that. So um, I'll just give you an update now rather than at the end of the service. Um, we have moved. We are in our new home. The other house is clean and lickety split. Thank you to those who came and helped us with windows and outside and moving my shed, you poor guys. If it's any consolation, now I have to unpack all that stuff and set it up properly. <laughs> but um, Kate and the girls are exhausted. I'm, I'm pretty exhausted too. They're going to go out to Monado so they can have a sleep in this morning. But they send their, um, their New Year's greetings to you all and um, trust that this year for you will be um, one of um, peace, love, joy and many blessings which we can count on because of God's love in Christ for us. So let us begin, I would ask you all to rise, with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like one day and we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. May be seated as we sing our first hymn.
friends in Christ, let us draw near now to God our Father with a true heart and to confess our sins and to ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We deserve your eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive all the sins of those who repent and believe. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to rise as we pray Psalm 147 responsively. Extol the Lord, Jerusalem, praise your God, Zion. The Word became flesh and lived among us. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your brothers and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. The word became flesh and lived among us. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. The word became flesh and lived among us. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. The word became flesh and lived among us. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh and lived among us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray that we use our time wisely. Heavenly Father, you have set the times and seasons of our lives. Teach us to live wisely here on earth and make the most of our opportunities until we reach our heavenly home. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Christmas is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 13. For everything there is a time. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, 
a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace, the God-given task. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading for today is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his son, but gave him up for us all. He, not with, he, will, not, he will not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for today is written according to St. Matthew verse, uh, chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick. And you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, 
and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for preparing your kingdom for us. Make us faithful servants throughout this year and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the next hymn. Grace, mercy and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's happened. Another year has passed us by. And who would have thought that it could have passed by so quickly with everything that has happened in the last year? All the ups and downs and the, uh, the turnarounds. I'm not talking about the last week, but the whole year in fact. And it really has gone by so quickly. And we're all learning that the older you get, the quicker that the hours, the days, the weeks, the months and the years go by. It seems like only yesterday when I'd grow a beard it was actually dark. <laughs> Not anymore. Where does the time go? The old cliche, life is short, is not just a cliche. It is, in fact, fact. Life is short. And God, the, the years that God gives us just race on by, don't they? It seems that we we're just recently ushering in 2021. And here we are on this second day of the new year of 2022 already and in fact it's quite sobering when you think about it 
quite sobering to realise that the length of our earthly lives when we compare it to the length of all eternity is our lives are really nothing. They're just a flash in the pan, aren't they? Here today, and like mist, disappear. Be that as it may, at this time of the year we look back on the year um, that has just ended and we look forward to the year that has just begun. It's a time that we take stock of our lives and the lives of the people, those that we love, um, those that are around us. It's a time for us to count and to be thankful for the many blessings that we have received over the past year. And perhaps the past year was a crucial one for you. Perhaps it was a year that will produce nothing but good memories for you in all the rest of your years to come. Or maybe it was a year that you would rather put behind you and not remember at all. Something that you would like to erase from your memory, a non-year as we might say. But whatever the case may be, whether 2021 was a year um, that you'd like to remember or you'd rather forget, the beginning of this new year brings us hope. It brings us hopes and dreams and anxious anticipation. Perhaps 2022 will be my year. Perhaps this year things are going to turn around for me, some of you might be thinking. We all have these hopes and dreams, don't we? We are all excited to begin a new year because we are hopeful that generally things are going to get better. But even as we leave the last year behind us, we don't just leave our hopes and our dreams behind, do we? They continue on. We make resolutions. Now, hands up anyone who made a New Year's resolution this year. Not one. There's a half hand. Not one. You don't have to share it. Not one. Wow. I didn't make one either. (laughs) This has got to be a first. Okay. Well... Usually, people make resolutions. I'm way off track here. (laughs) And we make resolutions and we remember at the same time that God has made resolutions for us also. And this morning, at the beginning of this new year, let me speak to you about resolutions. On the one hand is our resolutions and on the other are God's resolutions. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be truly pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So let's begin with our resolutions. (laughs) Or should I just skip this part altogether? No. At the start of this new year, whether we've made resolutions or not, um, we resolve to change things, usually. We resolve to change, make physical changes in our lives. We're going to lose weight. We're going to quit smoking. We're going to quit drinking as much. And we're going to start exercising. We're going to go on a healthy diet. What was that? Maybe all of them. them For some of us, yep. (laughs) And the Lord knows that some of us do need to make these resolutions and, um, and to stick with them. Now, I guess that this morning, I'm imagining, at least one of you must have got on the bathroom scale and gone, no, there's something wrong here, this thing's broken. No? Always. Always. <laughs> Was it saying a, a figure larger than you're expecting? Well, I could go on about all the things that we would resolve, could resolve to change in our physical lives, but these are only um, resolutions that we... These aren't the only resolutions that we make um, about our... Sorry, these are only 
resolutions that we make about our physical well-being. We also resolve to improve our relationships with others. We resolve to be a little more kinder, a little more patient, a little less angry, maybe. We'll show more love to our loved ones this year. We'll be more forgiving, more understanding. We may have more compassion for the less fortunate than us. We'll visit our loved ones more often. We'll try and mend those broken relationships. Yes, this is the year that I'm going to be a nicer person, nicer to those around me. And finally, in addition to the resolutions that we make concerning our physical well-being and our, um, and our relationships, there's another set of resolutions that we also make at the start of a new year. We also resolve to work on our spiritual well-being. For those of us who haven't been um, at church in a while, we'll resolve to attend church more regularly. For those who do attend church regularly, they, they might resolve to not miss a service for the rest of this year. For those who um, will, might decide to start attending Bible study, to begin daily devotions at home with our partner, with our families, to pray, read the Bible every day, and um, to spread the good news that God is for us in Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem for us, who lived for us, who died for us, and who was raised, and who is now at the right hand of God and indeed intercedes for us. And not only that, we ourselves are going to keep telling others about the good news of God's love for us in Jesus. Now, having said that, I must also tell you that, um, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you all. The bad news is that while many of us will make resolutions, we find it hard to keep them. While our intentions may, might be good, the flesh, unfortunately, is weak and not so good. Some will not smoke their last cigarette. Some will not drink too much for the last time. Some will not follow through on their healthy diet and lose weight and do daily exercise. Some will fail to be a new, improved, kinder, nicer, more patient, more loving, more kind, forgiving person that they set out to be. Some will not follow through on their resolution to regularly attend church, to read the Bible and to pray every day and to be witnesses to Christ in all that we do and in all that we say. Some of us will try hard to accomplish things that we set out to do at the beginning of the year, but others won't. In fact, some of us will fail miserably to live up to our own expectations and our good intentions. We may make it for a few days, or a few weeks, maybe a month or more, but eventually the weakness of our flesh will win out and we will fail to live up to what we set out to do. And that's not to say that we shouldn't make good resolutions because good intentions are, in fact, that. They are good. But um, and not only should we make resolutions, we should try our very best to keep them. It would be good for us to get physically more healthy and to grow in our relationships with others and also in our spiritual life. These are all good intentions, absolutely. We should resolve to do our best to bring these things about. But as I mentioned, the simple fact of the matter is the flesh is weak. And we are imperfect human beings. I'm going to skip that part. My friends, the bottom line is 
we are all sinful human beings and we are living in a sinful and fallen world. And our intentions are good, but our flesh is weak. And it's true that by nature we will not fulfil our good resolutions this year. That's the bad news. Now you're waiting for the good news, yeah? Well, this brings me to the third point of this morning's address, and that is the good news of God's resolutions. The good news is that there is one who made good resolutions for us, and he keeps them. God has resolved to save us from our sins by sending his only son, Jesus Christ, into the, into the world to fulfil the law that we cannot and to pay the price that we owe for our sins. And he did that all on the cross. God's son accomplished everything necessary for our salvation, for your salvation and for mine. Our Lord is a resolution maker and a resolution keeper, a promise maker and a promise keeper. In scripture, our Lord has made known to us his promises and he promises to us and he, that he promises to us and he completely keeps for us. He is completely faithful to his promises. He knows that our condition by nature is we are more than incapable of keeping um, the resolutions that we make. He knows that our flesh is weak um, and is more often um, than not, not very strong. And yet he knows and he loves us all the same. He loves us and he has re resolved to forgive us and promises to give us everlasting life and salvation. And that's the amazing good news that comes to us this morning and especially in the epistle reading that, was, um, that came from Romans 8. I'm going to share some of that again with you. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who, was, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are all being killed all day. We, account, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who first loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will able to be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. As you know, this is one of the most comforting um, bits of scripture that you'll find in the Bible. It is one that was put out on our signboard last year at the beginning of the, the current situation that we find ourselves in and that is to remind us and those around us that God will never leave us or abandon us. And you'd be hard pressed to find a better passage to, con to think about and to consider at the beginning of this new year. It assures us that nothing in the past year and nothing that will happen in this new year, whether good or bad, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the good news. That is the gospel. So here is one New Year's resolution 
that we can all count on. Your lead, Lord Jesus, has resolved to never let you be separated from his love. He is with you through the good and through the bad. He is with you when you experience the joys of marriage, when you celebrate the birth of a child, when you are healthy, when you are blessed with riches, even when you are poor. He is with you through broken relationships. He is with you when you mourn the loss of a loved one. He is with you when you're sick. He's with you when you're diagnosed with a fatal disease, when you're on your deathbed. He is with you through the good and the bad. That's his promise and he keeps it. So my dear friends, let me conclude this morning's address by saying that even though you don't deserve God's love, your Lord Jesus Christ is always here with you and for you. And he has always been with you ever since he placed God's name upon you and sealed you um, with the Holy Spirit in your baptism. He comes to you again today through his word and sacrament and he gives you his very body and blood to strengthen you in body and soul and to preserve you and keep you in true faith. He resolves to continue to be with you and for you throughout this coming year. He promises to meet you here in this holy house to forgive your sins and to feed you with his life-giving word and his holy supper and to strengthen your faith and your hope and your love. And he resolves to love you and keep you his promises to you. So be assured, my dear friends in Christ, every time that you come to this holy place where your Lord promises to meet you in his words and sacraments, you, the penitent and believing children of God, will be blessed. Yes, you will be blessed no matter how miserable or how tough life gets. You and I have this promise that nothing in all of creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our loving God in Jesus is always keeping his promises. So what more can we say as we begin this new year than thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you all to rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God in true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our next song. Pray an offering for it. Lord God, we thank you for the blessings you have given us year after year. Help us to wisely use the time you have given us. And lead us, while we remain here on earth, to serve you through all the people around us who are in need. Amen. There is a time for everything under heaven, so let us enter the new year by coming to God in prayer. God of mercy, you live in everlasting glory and your name is eternal. We give thanks that you have revealed to us the name of your holy son Jesus, our saviour, the name above every name, the only name by which we are saved, the name in which we have been baptised and at whose name every knee will bow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the blessings of the past year. You have helped us in the past and there is no end to your mercy. In these difficult times, Protect your church from the assaults of the evil one. Keep all pastors from false teaching and keep your flock from indifference and shame. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the nations of the earth with leaders who are wise and just, with public servants who are compassionate and patient, and with citizens who are honourable and respectful. Bless all the lawful actions taken by our country. Do not let us grow weary in well-doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the resources of the earth and the labour of all workers. Bless our children. Grant that they may grow in virtue and faithfulness until the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Have mercy on those who are lonely, tired, anxious or despairing. On those without a home, employment or family. Those who have lost hope and those whose holiday joy has become sorrow for any reason. Remember us in our dark times and teach us all not to worry about the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, forgive us for the sins of the past year. As we look to a new year, we confess to you that we are anxious and uncertain, for we do not know what will come to us. Yet, Lord, we know that you will be with us according to your mercy, and bless the endeavours of our congregation this year, and help us to grow in wisdom. Lord, In your mercy, hear our prayer. You are our God. Our times are in your hands. Give strength to the weary and new strength to those who wait, especially to us as we wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We sing Jesus' name of wondrous love. invite you to rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
You have revealed your glorious presence to us in a new way through the mystery of the word made flesh, so that as we see you in your Son, we are drawn to love you whom we cannot see. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come, for everything is now ready. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. <coughs> Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. body and the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you all in body and soul to life eternal. Go in peace. We give you thanks almighty God 
that you have refreshed us through this healing gift. And we pray that through it, you would graciously strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you all to rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. This, Amen. <laughs> May be seated for the final song. 